guys, how's it going? Today's project is not gonna be super complicated, but it is going to be interesting. So we are going to install these two 36 inch hay racks up there. It is starting to sprinkle a little bit, so I hope we can get this project done, but we did get the extension ladder out. It's positioned right underneath the window. Actually, Aaron did that because these ladders are quite heavy. Uh, installing a window basket is really very easy. There are brackets that you can buy that are proper. This, these are from Garden Artisans. You can see that there are holes on top and bottom where you can screw them into the side of your home or wherever you're installing your window basket. And then the window basket just rests on these hooks. The nice thing about this type of bracket is that it keeps the basket off of the surface of your home um, so that water and soil and stuff like that doesn't collect and maybe damage your siding. I'm not going to be using these today because this is our barn. Um, and it, we've got this kind of weird piece of molding right underneath the window that's too narrow. It, it's not high enough to install this bracket. So this bracket will either, if I were to install it, it would either be tipped like this, or I'd have to find some type of piece of wood or something like that to put underneath the lower one so that it's set flush. So what I'm gonna do instead is use some lag bolts. These are 5 16 inch by three inch right here. When I put them in, to the um, piece of molding into the side of the barn, I'm gonna put them in at a slight angle so that when I set my basket on it, uh, it, it can't fall forward. And I have done this several times. I did this at our old home. That's how I installed my window baskets and they held just great. But when you use a lag bolt, it isn't quite as secure as using something like that's this that has an actual hook on it. And the basket will also rest on the siding, um, which like I said, this is our barn. I'm not as concerned about the surface. I can put a piece of plastic um, behind the cocoa fiber if I want to later on, um, but I'll just you know keep an eye on it. Something I'll be watching for. So for these lag bolts, I've got a half inch socket right here on the end of my drill and we're going to actually uh, open that window and Aaron will be on the inside kind of holding things for me while I make some marks where I need to uh, put my bolts in. Let me show you. So as you can see this is only half the window basket. These are a special order. We ordered these from Garden Artisans um, so that it looked like one full piece but it would run the length of the window because this is a six foot window and I don't think that they have window baskets that are that long. Um, so it's more secure to do it in two pieces like this. But you can see right here where they kind of notch up, that's where the lag bolts will be. So I think we're gonna go ahead and get started with the first side. I made some marks right where I need to put my bolts, so I'm gonna drill a couple of pilot holes first. Now for the actual bolts. I think I like that right there. Maybe a little bit further. Oh. That is hard. Got the window baskets installed and filled with soil so now we're running drip before I put plants in them and we actually tapped into our drip system in our flower bed downstairs I'll show you where it originates and then have a configuration of this quarter inch poly tubing running through our barn <laughs> um, so it runs up the stairs up to the second level and we just use these like coax cable clips that you can get at the hardware store they're really easy to install and this poly tubing fits perfectly so you just use your screw gun to just screw them right into the wall That way it creates a really nice clean look. We drilled a hole right underneath the window. And of course, like I said, this is our barn, so we're not worried about drilling a hole in, in it uh, to run drip tubing. So it comes out right behind the window basket. So this is what I've got right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out how to get three drips for each basket. So what I'll probably do is cut in and put T's in and then run separate tubing with emitters on the end. So this is how we ran the drip. There's the access right there on the far side and I put an elbow there so that it came into the baskets really nicely. And then every so often, so for three emitters per basket, I put a T coupler, another little piece of poly tubing, and then I'm putting half gallon emitters on the end of each piece of tubing. So they go on really easy. You can see one right in front of me. I just push it on like this. Right there, and like I said, this water runs every single day because it's hooked into our drip system in our flower bed. So we'll be able to um, 
kind of play with this. If we need to put bigger emitters on, we can do that. If we need to cap some because it's getting too much water, we can do that as well. Um, so I just need to put the rest of the emitters on and I'm, then I'm gonna put a little bit of slow release fertilizer in the soil so there's lots of nutrition going on to begin with and then I'm gonna go grab my plants. Well, we just had quite a rainstorm come through here, which is super unusual for Eastern Oregon. But look up there and tell me that that does not look amazing. I love it up there. So they're completely full of Supertunia Royal Magenta. I picked that plant on purpose because usually this is a full sun location. It's just overcast today. Uh, and they're self-cleaning. Supertunias, you do not have to deadhead, which is kind of important when you have a planter up that high. I obviously don't want to be getting the extension ladder out every time it needs maintenance. Um, so the only thing I should have to do with that is fertilize it once a week, um, which I can run up and do that from the window really easily. And then maybe midsummer go in and give them a light haircut if they need it. Um, but that should be it. I'm so excited to see all of those grow and fill in. I mean, all the pots down below as well as the hay racks up above. Let me show you really quick where we tapped in for the drip system. So this is where the drip tubing comes out of the barn and goes underneath this walkway. And it is in a piece of PVC pipe so that we can walk on it safely without crimping or crushing it. Can you hear Benjamin in the background? <laughs> he is squealing in delight back here. He loves to hear himself talk. So then the tubing goes underneath the fence. And you can't really see where we tapped into the drip tube because of all the plants, but this is the tube that it taps into back over there. Um, and we run this zone every day in the summer, in the heat of the summer, so the pot should be great. So the drip tubing that runs through the barn feeds the four containers that are along the bottom and then the hay rack up top. So if you guys haven't gathered by now, I am a huge hay rack fan. I think we should dub this the year of the hay rack because we are putting them everywhere. Put them on our front fence line. I've got a few I still have yet to plant up out in the landscape. And then these new ones, so much fun. I just love it. So you guys, we will be updating you along the way this season to show you how everything's growing on. So stay tuned for all of those. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.